A high school history class. The smell of the dry erase marker still lingering from the notes the teacher took on the board. A student in the desk right next to mine slowly raised her hand and asked, how old was George Washington when he discovered the United States? <laughs> Wait, what? My teacher responded, um, the day he was born, I'm guessing he was born in Virginia. My freshman year, I heard many ridiculous things. My classmates and I were at the age where we thought we knew everything, but the reality was we didn't really know anything. We believed all of the interesting facts we read on Facebook and knew nothing about politics. Now, freshmen have barely started their high school career, so it's obvious that they have a lot left to learn. One thing I think students should be learning much sooner is how to think for this themselves. Today, we have more access to technology than when we have ever had before. Ironically, we also have more people who are misinformed than we have ever had before. Why is this happening? I believe the problem starts from a young age. From the time we're this small, we're told the right way to do things. The right way to say the alphabet, the right way to get the answers from math, and the right way to hold your pencil. My question is, who said these were the right way to do things? I babysit a little boy named JR. He's in preschool, and he says the alphabet faster than any little boy I've ever heard. But it goes a little something like A, B, C, D, Q, O, L, I, T, N. It's completely out of order, but he gets every single letter. He knows everything they want him to know, but he put a different spin on it because that's how he understands it. When I was in middle school, people started telling me, you hold your pencil wrong. Why are you doing it like that? But I don't think it really matters. I mean, I wrote this whole speech holding my pencil wrong, so I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> um, so one way we can fix this is to start questioning things. Whenever we're in our classrooms, we need to stop sitting back, twirling our hair, texting. We need to start asking questions, get engaged. You might not only learn something for yourself, but you could teach your teacher something by asking that question, who in turn can teach something to the younger generations below you. That could be your fault. You could be helping other generations learn just by asking one simple question. We need to start doing our research. We have amazing opportunities for research right at our fingertips. They're in our pockets. At any time of the day, we could whip out our phones search something in Google, and nine times out of 10, it's gonna come up. Our parents had to go all the way to the library if they wanted to know something. <laughs> we don't even have to get out of bed. Like, we're a spoiled generation, and we don't take advantage of it. We sit here and aimlessly scroll through Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram, all these social media sites that are doing nothing to better us. Now, I'm not saying get rid of all these social media sites, they're no use. They're fun, I have them all as well. But I have also started to get apps where I can get a word of the day, I have news directly to my phone. And I'm trying to get more things that can better me so I can help better my community and later on my country. At this point, we're so misinformed that the politicians can tell us anything they want us to believe. It doesn't even have to be right. They can just tell us, and we'll have this blind faith that they're, they're honest. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. If we don't do our research and we vote for the handsomest candidate, we could really hurt our, our communities. He may be easy on the eyes, but he could be detrimental to our society. So why does this matter? Why should any of us care? Most of us are just kids. We can't do anything about it, right? Wrong. This may sound cheesy, but we're the future. In a few years, we're going to be in charge. And if we're not helping better this country and our communities, who are we helping? So today, I encourage you to take these three challenges. First, think for yourself. Second, ask questions. 
And third, do your research. You'll be surprised how much you were missing before.